Hello. Hi. Hey, we've got sound. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're nice and loud now. Yeah. Welcome to the joys of working in a in a, in a university institution, right? Um, how are you, so how are you doing today? Um, so I'll introduce myself. So uh, yeah, my name's Jamie. It's nice to meet you, Rob. Do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? <laughs> well, no, I can I can probe if you like. We can go probing. Um, so where are you today? In the loft of my house. Okay. Which is my Nice, okay. Um, so, your two days a week, you're kind of uh, at a kind of job, 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 and then the rest of the time is freelancing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how do you find that split? Uh, good. Yeah, good. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Yeah, do you... I don't want to do either, like, too much. Okay, cool. That's really... It's interesting that like, they're finding that kind of balance between those two things. Like, working full-time yeah. um, at a job that wasn't freelancing, kind of, was going... Was cutting back your hours, was that a specific choice to do more freelance work, or what was the uh, decision-making there? Yeah, it, 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 it kind of... Um, it kind of took over on its own. So, like, I was working on... I was working on a book, and um, that was taking up a lot of time. And then I got—I I just kept getting more and more projects, and something had to give. So it was like a—I don't know—it was like a, a natural thing that happened. And I've been working there like <coughs> four years or so. Okay. So uh, I think in my head I was, I was like, okay. You've reached your, reached your point with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So could you give us a bit of kind of background as to your illustration practice then? I've got, just so you know, you're on the big screen. Um, I won't spin you around because you might like get sucked into a vortex. Um, but I've got your website up so I can kind of click through some slides and click through some projects. But yeah, could you just give us a bit of an overview of your current illustration practice? Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, that would be great. Yeah, go for it. Take on a tour of the room. Yeah, okay, yeah, that'd be lovely. I don't want to like... Oh, <laughs> I need to make you bigger though, not smaller. There we go. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, so... Don't move us too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I mean, do you like, do you like kind of surrounding yourself with kind of completed projects? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess it's like, um, I don't know, I guess it's like, I don't know, 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 I don't know
I guess it's like uh, one big project. You know what I mean? Like you okay. Have to do the uh, connections with new things and stuff together. That kind of okay, that's really interesting. So you, so you're kind of defining your practice as a, as a whole body of work. I guess. Well, I guess so. More like. Um, I, I would, mm, no, okay. Okay. <laughs> Could you, I could you kind of go into those like themes and those ideas that you think are kind of like broadly applicable? Yeah. And do those, does that, is there like a different mode of making then, or like a different kind of mode of processing for you when you're working on, say, we've got your kind of, um, uh, the pencil packaging up on the screen now, between make a project like that, and a brief like that, and when you're making toys, and when you're making kind of those uh, kind of handmade objects, is there a different processes going on mentally? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. I, I there's like a push and pull of, of both of those things um, when doing either work and it's like <coughs> both kind of like and then doing the handmade stuff you're influencing 
you're influenced, sorry, by the like, more commercial stuff and vice versa. So, uh, <coughs> so like, for, for example, the, the wooden toy things, like I, um, I just, I just done like a little position of those, and I've just done some other like little toys in an addition, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the packaging, how I can. Sitting in a ditty bag, if you sell it. Yeah. You know, like, I, and then I think about, like, what happens when you sell packaging on a small scale? And that's obviously influenced by the stuff that I'm doing. It's more uh, in my sort of studio. Yeah. yeah. It really strikes me in these kind of wooden things that the starting point for them is you wanting to. I mean, I don't want to put the words in rough, but it seems like the starting point is you wanting to just kind of play with materials and just. Just, yeah. just kind of explore and just try stuff out, and then the kind of commercial aspect kind of follows. But then it comes about how do you then? Oh, I've made a thing here. How do I now make this a thing that I can, you know, I can make it a bit more? <coughs> yeah, I think so. Um, it's funny that the, the materials that you, might, you, um, there's a lot of like uh, translations between the two. So. Uh, at the studio last year, we went on, we went on a, a trip to the factory where they produce all the cards and the wrapping paper. It's in boxes somewhere. And uh, we had like a tour around the factory. And uh, they, they took me into this room and it was like all oh, holographic tape that they used for the like super cheesy green cards, like no one had yeah, nice. And I had a giant room full of this stuff. And although like I probably wouldn't touch that stuff at the studio because the context of using that on a green card is, is gross. Uh, <laughs> but using using it in my own work, I was like, well this is like quite a cool material, like what could what could I use that for? So I had, so I made this, uh, this zine, which is like. Oh, I think um, I can get that up on. I can get that up on your website as well. Yeah, uh, and it uses that one like paper, so I think I'm really interested in this kind of materials that are, I don't know, maybe like a bit taboo or yeah. haven't been used in like a very. <laughs> and also, like again, with the um, like old techniques and new techniques, like how you can how you can use something that is relatively like new and uh, now, and like combine it with an old process, like or an older process, like screen printing or whatever. And has that kind of uh, inquisitiveness or that that um. I mean, it's evident in your portfolio, kind of, that, that material is such an important thing to your practice. Has that yeah. always been there? Has it always been about kind of exploring how you combine and kind of find materials and how you work with those? Or is that something that's developed over time? Yeah, no, I think so. I think it's developed over time, um, especially being at the studio. That's, that's really like, like that was probably the the like, the impetus for all that stuff. Because like, before that, I, I. Uh, Paper scanning stuff in like that, and then working on like more like uh, product CD projects and you're working with different materials and factories and things like that, and you're exposed to those different materials and you're forced to kind of think about like, oh, does this even have to like this paper? Like, does these papers go together or what? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I guess it's kind of. Or from being there over the last like I don't know, four or five years. Yeah, nice. And so, how do you how do you process that stuff? Do you do you keep sketchbooks, or do you just kind of go with it and kind of commit to final things, or what's uh, your kind of process? No, so, so I'll show you a sketchbook. Like my sketchbooks are like I've got like a sketchbook that's like a sketchbook that's like three sheets of paper. Hang on, I'll put I'll put you on full screen. Hang on. I don't want the best way to show you. 
Oh, hang on, I've forgotten how to do this again. How did I do it last time? Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take you off full screen. <laughs> I'll put you back small. It's quite hard to see, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. It feels interactive like this, I like it. Yeah? Yeah. You can see my shoe, but... Um, <laughs> so, like, all of the stuff that, that I've collected for like, this project, for, like, this is that book that I was just... Um, yeah, okay, yeah. ...that is, like, pre-making thing. And it's full of, like, stuff, source material, I suppose, like, things that shapes and... Ah, oh, great. ...head and that kind of stuff. And so, <coughs> I will, um, I'll use all of that as a starting point and make, um, make pictures from that stuff. So, like, combine all those things and see if they fit together or not, and then match that up with sketchbook stuff, which is more, like, kind of cohesive ideas about, like, composition or... Okay, so the so it's kind of like there are points floating around in space, and then is it digitally where all that stuff comes together? <laughs> well, that's I mean that in the nicest term. I mean that in the nicest. Like, it sounded cooler than. As in, as in, so you have kind of the ideas can get contained within one sketchbook, and kind of thumbnails and and yeah. compositional stuff in one pieces kind of on sheets that exist in folders and then is it digitally where all that stuff kind of marries up together? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, it depends what it is. Like, sometimes, like, I try to leave, like, some, some wiggle room, but I do, I do, like, in books, especially, you have to have it sort of like that, you know, you can't just kind of wing it. So, um, that's some, like, so this is, like, this, this is, like, what a rough. Okay, nice. With um with the like, so it's kind of it's quite uh it's quite tight in terms of composition or like what the characters are gonna look like, but I tried to do this is a lot of like white space or maybe there's not that much kind of detail around it. I tried to, to leave um enough freedom to change or like, I don't know, things happen as the, as the project go along. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so it's kind of in a similar note, but maybe it's kind of changing slightly, is one of the things we've been talking about with um, our first year, particularly at the moment, is kind of roughing and the importance of roughing and kind of how that works in the context of, you know, professional commissions and kind of dealing with clients and dealing with um, yeah. other people, you know, art directors and so on and so forth. Like, I suppose if I could take your that children's book that you're working on at the moment as an example, like could you yeah. talk a bit about that back and forth and that process of kind of getting to a resolved picture book? Yeah. Okay. Um, so like that, that one maybe not the picture book, but like the topic that called Lawrence came in. You have a really good relationship with, but they they're like super free, like with with what I do with them, they just like, here's the, the kind of overview of what we want you to do, and I think they trust me to like, not do anything to be stupid, okay. so my roughs for them were pretty much, uh, 
pretty much that. So I, I did kind of how I imagined it, and, and then there was like minimal back and forth, like about the whole time. And then it was like, yeah, you have to take this out, 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 and it's um, some pretty still characters in the background. And some of them are like kind of medieval looking characters. And um, there's some, and they're, they're topless in the thing. They're like little top characters, these guys. And they had a big thing about taking the nipples off all the characters. Okay. <laughs> no, no. But, like, yeah, like, but people have got nipples. <laughs> people have got nipples, that's what we thought. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a male character, isn't it? Um, that is odd. Yeah. Uh, um, so there's like kind of minimal stuff like that, and then uh, some of the pages are just like, no, this, this, this kind of is more, I think. So I have to go, there's some back and forth with that. But it didn't take like enough for the, uh, for the project. Like, I, think I just finished the book first. I'm recommending like, on the wall. Is this and, the, the um, cave one? Is it the what one? The is this the cave? It is the cave. Okay, great. And I have some, and behind you, I have some, uh, <coughs> some dummy books that you can kind of see the, the process of like roughing that stuff out and how, how that changes. Because uh, that was way more, who was way more involved with the publisher on that one. And not just publishing, but like the editor and uh, sales people, and like anyone gets involved yeah. when you're doing it. Especially in my, in the first one I've written, so it's like a lot of people got involved. And um, so I, uh, I don't know what the example is, but um, yeah, there, there was a lot of. There's a lot of back yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. It was, uh, I don't know if there's any good story, but, um, yeah. That's cool, that's cool. That's great, though, that's great. I think it's just that kind of, how, I mean, so it's really interesting that you kind of, your, that second one you're talking about, it kind of, there was a lot more freedom. Um, yeah. How do you think you, I mean, how do you think you've reached that point then, I suppose, in your kind of, in your making? There's such a strong... Kind of voice, and there's such a strong tone coming through your portfolio, kind of consistently. Like, how do you how? So, it's how do you feel like you might have gotten to reach that point where kind of they were allowing you that sense of freedom? They were kind of allowing you that. Yeah, uh, I think I think with those guys, it's um, it's kind of like they they were like they were Okay, that's really interesting. I think because I, I, because I, it's interesting. Like looking through your portfolio, I there is a, there's there's a real kind of there's some projects maybe they kind of stand out as seeing things you feel, you can see kind of being kind of sitting in that commercial setting. But some 
they really they seem kind of almost like anti that like I'm just going to make work that is just for me a little bit on some yeah. of these. Yeah, there's definitely some of that. Like I think uh, I'm, I'm definitely like swinging quite a lot towards like the kind of like I think it seems, yeah. As I say, it kind of seems to be looking at the word that, like, it is those <coughs> those self-driven things that are you making fun that I think really connects with an audience and connects with clients who can maybe kind of see that yeah. that you're just having fun with processing and making making imagery that is there to be yeah. enjoyed. Yeah, and I think that's something that's that is easily connectable with, and I think that's really powerful thing in the work that you're making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, especially with like, do a lot of kids stuff, I think, I was really, what was I reading this morning? Oh, the, the, the dude who does, um, I forget his name, he's like the Nintendo guy, he came up with, uh, like all the Nintendo characters. Anyone? <laughs> Shigeru Miyamoto. Shigeru Miyamoto, we had there. There you go. Um, I think that's some of the things that we talk about. Like, it's just if you make work that you want to make, then you will uh, find you'll find that audience. Those people will be drawn to that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I often think about because uh, it, it's not it's not just about uh, it's not just about <coughs> that light is crazy. It's not really nice. Is it? Hang on, is it right behind my head? Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> um, if I just stand like this. It's been off our screen, yeah. <laughs> it looks great, actually, I hadn't realised. <laughs> yeah, I think it's not just about finding an interesting project when you're doing that stuff. I think like, all the opportunities or like, people that I've met or whatever, like, even just other creative people, like, you, you bond over maybe uh, a project that you, you really get, you know, like some of my friends are <coughs> really, really cool, it's like a little insight into kind of their personality or whatever, so, so you, you I, kind of, I kind of see projects or, mm, projects less so, but like just sticking stuff out on the internet, creating stuff, um, or as products out in the world, you're sending like a little it's like a little radio signal that you're sending out. And uh, sometimes like it just goes out forever and no one ever cares about that thing. 
But sometimes, like, it would, like, ping back that like, one person would be like, I really like that thing you did, or, oh, I really got something out of that weird zine that you made, or my friend bought this thing, or whatever. And I think that's really important. And I think that those same, uh, like, connections that you have with, like, other creative people, probably are the same reasons that uh, you get commissioned to do projects or whatever, you know? So it's, I kind of see it and you're, everyone's sending out like a little signal and if someone connects with it, then they'll like, ping it back. That's great, that's magic. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna ask you two more questions and then we'll kind of, we'll kind of round that off. Um, uh, uh, my first question, um, have you ever seen a ghost? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to try a new thing where I ask that question and see if, because there might be a good story in it, I wonder. Yeah, I can't think of. I wish that I had. But it's probably, I don't think I've really seen a ghost. Yeah. 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 Ye